Thomas Hobbes, the 5th of April 1588 to the 4th of December 1679. In some older texts, Thomas Hobbes of Malmesbury was an English philosopher who is considered one of the founders of modern political philosophy. Hobbes is best known for his 1651 book Leviathan, which expounded an influential formulation of social contract theory. In addition to political philosophy, Hobbes also contributed to a diverse array of other fields, including history, jurisprudence, geometry, the physics of gases, theology, ethics, and general philosophy. Though on rational grounds a champion of absolutism for the sovereign, Hobbes also developed some of the fundamentals of European liberal thought, the right of the individual, the natural equality of all men, the artificial character of the political order which led to the later distinction between civil society and the state, the view that all legitimate political power must be representative and based on the consent of the people, and a liberal interpretation of law that leaves people free to do whatever the law does not explicitly forbid. His understanding of humans as being matter and motion, obeying the same physical laws as other matter and motion, remains influential, and his account of human nature as self-interested cooperation, and of political communities as being based upon a social contract, remains one of the major topics of political philosophy. <laughs> Early life and education Thomas Hobbes was born at Westport, now part of Malmesbury in Wiltshire, England, on 5 April 1588. Born prematurely when his mother heard of the coming invasion of the Spanish Armada, Hobbes later reported that, "...my mother gave birth to twins, myself and fear." His childhood is almost completely unknown, and his mother's name is unknown. His father, Thomas Sr., was the vicar of Charlton and Westport. Thomas Hobbes, the younger, had a brother Edmund, about two years older, and a sister. Thomas Sr. was involved in a fight with the local clergy outside his church, forcing him to leave London and abandon the family. The family was left in the care of Thomas Sr.'s older brother, Francis, a wealthy merchant with no family. Hobbes Jr. was educated at Westport Church from age four, passed to the Malmesbury School, and then to a private school kept by a young man named Robert Latimer, a graduate of the University of Oxford. Hobbes was a good pupil, and around 1603 he went up to Magdalen Hall, the predecessor college to Hertford College, Oxford. The principal John Wilkinson was a Puritan, and he had some influence on Hobbes. At university, Hobbes appears to have followed his own curriculum, he was little attracted by the scholastic learning," and completed his B.A. degree in 1608. He was recommended by Sir James Hussey, his master at Magdalen, as tutor to William, the son of William Cavendish, Baron of Hardwick and later Earl of Devonshire, and began a lifelong connection with that family. Hobbes became a companion to the younger William and in 1610 they both took part in a grand tour of Europe. Hobbes was exposed to European scientific and critical methods during the tour, in contrast to the scholastic philosophy that he had learned in Oxford. His scholarly efforts at the time were aimed at a careful study of classic Greek and Latin authors. One outcome was, in 1628, his translation of Thucydides' History of the Peloponnesian War, the first translation of that work into English from the original Greek. It has been argued that three of the discourses in the 1620 publication known as Horia Subsecivi, Observations and Discourses also represent the work of Hobbes from this period. Although he associated with literary figures like Ben Jonson and briefly worked as Francis Bacon's amanuensis, he did not extend his efforts into philosophy until after 1629. In June 1628, his employer Cavendish, then the Earl of Devonshire, died of the plague and the widowed countess dismissed Hobbes. Topic. In Paris 1630 Hobbes soon found work as a tutor to Gervis Clifton, the son of Sir Gervis Clifton, first baronet mostly spent in Paris until 1631. Thereafter, he again found work with the Cavendish family, tutoring William Cavendish, 3rd Earl of Devonshire, the eldest son of his previous pupil. Over the next seven years, as well as tutoring, he expanded his own knowledge of philosophy, awakening in him curiosity over key philosophic debates. He visited Florence in 1636 and was later a regular debater in philosophic groups in Paris, held together by Marin Mersenne. Hobbes's first area of study was an interest in the physical doctrine of motion and physical momentum. Despite his interest in this phenomenon, he disdained experimental work as in physics. 
He went on to conceive the system of thought to the elaboration of which he would devote his life. His scheme was first to work out, in a separate treatise, a systematic doctrine of body, showing how physical phenomena were universally explicable in terms of motion, at least as motion or mechanical action was then understood. He then singled out man from the realm of nature and plants. Then, in another treatise, he showed what specific bodily motions were involved in the production of the peculiar phenomena of sensation, knowledge, affections and passions whereby man came into relation with man. Finally he considered, in his crowning treatise, how men were moved to enter into society, and argued how this must be regulated if men were not to fall back into "...brutishness and misery." Thus he proposed to unite the separate phenomena of body, man, and the state. In England Hobbes came home, in 1637, to a country riven with discontent, which disrupted him from the orderly execution of his philosophic plan. However, by the end of the short parliament in 1640, he had written a short treatise called The Elements of Law, Natural and Politic. It was not published and only circulated as a manuscript among his acquaintances. A pirated version, however, was published about ten years later. Although it seems that much of the elements of law was composed before the sitting of the short parliament, there are polemical pieces of the work that clearly mark the influences of the rising political crisis. Nevertheless, many though not all, elements of Hobbes's political thought were unchanged between the elements of law and Leviathan, which demonstrates that the events of the English Civil War had little effect on his contractarian methodology. However, the arguments in Leviathan were modified from the elements of law when it came to the necessity of consent in creating political obligation. Namely, Hobbes wrote in the elements of law that patrimonial kingdoms were not necessarily formed by the consent of the governed, while in Leviathan he argued that they were. This was perhaps a reflection either of Hobbes's thoughts about the engagement controversy or of his reaction to treatises published by patriarchalists, such as Sir Robert Filmer, between 1640 and 1651, when in November 1640 the Long Parliament succeeded the short, Hobbes felt that he was in disfavour due to the circulation of his treatise and fled to Paris. He did not return for eleven years. In Paris, he rejoined the coterie around Mersenne and wrote a critique of the Meditations on First Philosophy of Descartes, which was printed as third among the sets of objections appended, with replies from Descartes, in 1641. A different set of remarks on other works by Descartes succeeded only in ending all correspondence between the two. Hobbes also extended his own works in a way, working on the third section, De Sive, which was finished in November 1641. Although it was initially only circulated privately, it was well received, and included lines of argumentation that were repeated a decade later in Leviathan. He then returned to hard work on the first two sections of his work and published little except a short treatise on optics Tractatus Opticus included in the collection of scientific tracts published by Mersenne as Cogitata Physico-Mathematica in 1644. He built a good reputation in philosophic circles and in 1645 was chosen with Descartes, Giles de Roberville and others to referee the controversy between John Pell and Longamontanus over the problem of squaring the circle. Topic: <laughs> Civil War period 1642 to 1651. The English Civil War began in 1642, and when the royalist cause began to decline in mid-1644, the king's supporters fled to Europe. Many came to Paris and were known to Hobbes. This revitalized Hobbes's political interests and the De Sive was republished and more widely distributed. The printing began in 1646 by Samuel de Sorbière through the Elsevier Press at Amsterdam with a new preface and some new notes in reply to objections. In 1647, Hobbes took up a position as mathematical instructor to the young Charles, Prince of Wales, who had come to Paris from Jersey around July. This engagement lasted until 1648 when Charles went to Holland. The company of the exiled royalists led Hobbes to produce Leviathan, which set forth his theory of civil government in relation to the political crisis resulting from the war. Hobbes compared the state to a monster Leviathan, composed of men, created under pressure of human needs and dissolved by civil strife due to human passions. The work closed with a general review and conclusion. In response to the war, which answered the question, does a subject have the right to change allegiance when a former sovereign's power to protect is irrevocably lost? During the years of composing Leviathan, Hobbes remained in or near Paris. 
In 1647, a serious illness that nearly killed him disabled him for six months. On recovering, he resumed his literary task and completed it by 1650. Meanwhile, a translation of De Sive was being produced. Scholars disagree about whether it was Hobbes who translated it. In 1650, a pirated edition of the Elements of Law, Natural and Politic was published. It was divided into two small volumes Human Nature, or the Fundamental Elements of Polici and de Corpore Politico, or the Elements of Law, Moral and Politic. In 1651, the translation of De Sive was published under the title Philosophical Rudiments Concerning Government and Society. Also, the printing of the greater work proceeded, and finally appeared in mid-1651, titled Leviathan, or the matter, form, and power of a common wealth, ecclesiastical and civil. It had a famous title page engraving depicting a crowned giant above the waist towering above hills overlooking a landscape, holding a sword and a crozier and made up of tiny human figures. The work had immediate impact. Soon, Hobbes was more lauded and decried than any other thinker of his time. The first effect of its publication was to sever his link with the exiled royalists, who might well have killed him. The secularist spirit of his book greatly angered both Anglicans and French Catholics. Hobbes appealed to the revolutionary English government for protection and fled back to London in winter 1651. After his submission to the Council of State, he was allowed to subside into private life in Fetter Lane. Topic. Leviathan. In Leviathan, Hobbes set out his doctrine of the foundation of states and legitimate governments and creating an objective science of morality. Much of the book is occupied with demonstrating the necessity of a strong central authority to avoid the evil of discord and civil war. Beginning from a mechanistic understanding of human beings and their passions, Hobbes postulates what life would be like without government, a condition which he calls the state of nature. In that state, each person would have a right, or license, to everything in the world. This, Hobbes argues, would lead to a war of all against all. Bellum omnium contra omnes. The description contains what has been called one of the best-known passages in English philosophy, which describes the natural state humankind would be in, were it not for political community. In such condition, there is no place for industry, because the fruit thereof is uncertain, and consequently no culture of the earth, no navigation, nor use of the commodities that may be imported by sea, no commodious building, no instruments of moving, and removing, such things as require much force, no knowledge of the face of the earth, no account of time, no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all, continual fear, and danger of violent death, and the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. In such a state, people fear death, and lack both the things necessary to commodious living, and the hope of being able to toil to obtain them. So, in order to avoid it, people accede to a social contract and establish a civil society. According to Hobbes, society is a population and a sovereign authority, to whom all individuals in that society cede some rights for the sake of protection. Any power exercised by this authority cannot be resisted, because the protector's sovereign power derives from individuals surrendering their own sovereign power for protection. The individuals are thereby the authors of all decisions made by the sovereign. He that complaineth of injury from his sovereign complaineth that whereof he himself is the author, and therefore ought not to accuse any man but himself, no nor himself of injury because to do injury to one's self is impossible. There is no doctrine of separation of powers in Hobbes's discussion. According to Hobbes, the sovereign must control civil, military, judicial and ecclesiastical powers, even the words. Topic. Opposition Topic. John Bramhall In 1654 a small treatise, of liberty and necessity, directed at Hobbes, was published by Bishop John Bramhall. Bramhall, a strong Arminian, had met and debated with Hobbes and afterwards wrote down his views and sent them privately to be answered in this form by Hobbes. Hobbes duly replied, but not for publication. However, a French acquaintance took a copy of the reply and published it with an extravagantly laudatory epistle. Bramhall countered in 1655, when he printed everything that had passed between them under the title of A Defense of the True Liberty of Human Actions from Antecedent or Extrinsic Necessity. In 1656, Hobbes was ready with the questions concerning liberty, necessity and chance, in which he replied, with astonishing force, to the bishop. 
As perhaps the first clear exposition of the psychological doctrine of determinism, Hobbes's own two pieces were important in the history of the free will controversy. The bishop returned to the charge in 1658 with castigations of Mr. Hobbes's animadversions, and also included a bulky appendix entitled The Catching of Leviathan the Great Whale. John Wallace Hobbes opposed the existing academic arrangements, and assailed the system of the original universities in Leviathan. He went on to publish De Corpore, which contained not only tendentious views on mathematics but also an erroneous proof of the squaring of the circle. This all led mathematicians to target him for polemics and sparked John Wallace to become one of his most persistent opponents. From 1655, the publishing date of De Corpore, Hobbes and Wallace went round after round trying to disprove each other's positions. After years of debate, the spat over proving the squaring of the circle gained such notoriety that it has become one of the most infamous feuds in mathematical history. <laughs> Atheist Hobbes has been accused of atheism, or in the case of Bramhall, of teachings that could lead to atheism. This was an important accusation, and Hobbes himself wrote, in his answer to Bramhall's The Catching of Leviathan, that, "...atheism, impiety, and the like are words of the greatest defamation possible." Hobbes always defended himself from such accusations. In more recent times also, much has been made of his religious views by scholars such as Richard Tuck and J. G. A. Pocock, but there is still widespread disagreement about the exact significance of Hobbes's unusual views on religion. As Martinich has pointed out, in Hobbes's time the term, atheist, was often applied to people who believed in God but not in divine providence, or to people who believed in God but also maintained other beliefs that were inconsistent with such belief. He says that this sort of discrepancy has led to many errors in determining who was an atheist in the early modern period." In this extended early modern sense of atheism, Hobbes did take positions that strongly disagreed with church teachings of his time. For example, he argued repeatedly that there are no incorporeal substances, and that all things, including human thoughts, and even God, heaven, and hell are corporeal, matter in motion. He argued that Though Scripture acknowledge spirits, yet doth it nowhere say, that they are incorporeal, meaning thereby without dimensions and quantity." In this view, Hobbes claimed to be following Tertullian, whose views were not condemned in the First Council of Nicaea. Like John Locke, he also stated that true revelation can never disagree with human reason and experience, although he also argued that people should accept revelation and its interpretations for the reason that they should accept the commands of their sovereign, in order to avoid war. Topic. Later life In 1658, Hobbes published the final section of his philosophical system, completing the scheme he had planned more than twenty years before. De Hamann consisted for the most part of an elaborate theory of vision. The remainder of the treatise dealt cursorily with some of the topics more fully treated in the human nature and the Leviathan. In addition to publishing some controversial writings on mathematics and physics, Hobbes also continued to produce philosophical works. From the time of the Restoration, he acquired a new prominence. Hobbism became a byword for all that respectable society ought to denounce. The young king, Hobbes' former pupil, now Charles II, remembered Hobbes and called him to the court to grant him a pension of £100. The king was important in protecting Hobbes when, in 1666, the House of Commons introduced a bill against atheism and profaneness. That same year, on 17 October 1666, it was ordered that the committee to which the bill was referred, should be empowered to receive information touching such books as tend to atheism, blasphemy and profaneness, in particular, the book of Mr. Hobbes called the Leviathan. Hobbes was terrified at the prospect of being labeled a heretic, and proceeded to burn some of his compromising papers. At the same time, he examined the actual state of the law of heresy. The results of his investigation were first announced in three short dialogues added as an appendix to his Latin translation of Leviathan, published in Amsterdam in 1668. In this appendix, Hobbes aimed to show that, since the High Court of Commission had been put down, there remained no court of heresy at all to which he was amenable, and that nothing could be heresy except opposing the Nicene Creed, which, he maintained, Leviathan did not do. 
The only consequence that came of the bill was that Hobbes could never thereafter publish anything in England on subjects relating to human conduct. The 1668 edition of his works was printed in Amsterdam because he could not obtain the censor's license for its publication in England. Other writings were not made public until after his death, including Behemoth, the history of the causes of the civil wars of England and of the councils and artifices by which they were carried on from the year 1640 to the year 1662. For some time, Hobbes was not even allowed to respond, whatever his enemies tried. Despite this, his reputation abroad was formidable, and noble or learned foreigners who came to England never forgot to pay their respects to the old philosopher. His final works were an autobiography in Latin verse in 1672, and a translation of four books of the Odyssey into rugged English rhymes that in 1673 led to a complete translation of both Iliad and Odyssey in 1675. Topic. Death In October 1679 Hobbes suffered a bladder disorder, and then a paralytic stroke, from which he died on 4 December 1679, aged 91. His last words were said to have been, "...a great leap in the dark," uttered in his final conscious moments. His body was interred in St. John the Baptist's Church, Althuck Nall, in Derbyshire. Works Bibliography. 1602. Latin translation of Euripides Medea. Lost. 1620. Three of the discourses in the Horae Subsecivi, Observation and Discourses, a discourse of Tacitus, a discourse of Rome, and a discourse of laws. 1626. De Mirabilis Pecci, being the wonders of the peak in Derbyshire, a poem first published in 1636. 1629. Eight Books of the Peloponnesian Were, translation with an introduction of Thucydides, History of the Peloponnesian War. 1630. A short tract on first principles, British Museum, Harleian MS 6796, ff. 297-308, critical edition with commentary and French translation by Jean Bernhardt, Court Traité des Premiers Principes, Paris, Puf, 1988 Authorship doubtful, this work is attributed by some critics to Robert Payne. 1637 A Brief of the Art of Rhetoric In Molesworth's edition the title is The Whole Art of Rhetoric. A new edition has been edited by John T. Harwood, The Rhetorics of Thomas Hobbes and Bernard Lamy, Carbondale, Southern Illinois University Press, 1986. Authorship probable, while Carl Schumann firmly rejects the attribution of this work to Hobbes, disagreeing with Quentin Skinner, who has come to agree with Schumann, a preponderance of scholarship disagrees with Schumann's idiosyncratic assessment. 1639. Tractatus Opticus II British Library, Harley MS 6796, ff. 193-266, first complete edition 1963 1640. Elements of Law, Natural and Politic circulated only in handwritten copies, first printed edition, without Hobbes's permission in 1650 1641. Objectiones ad cartesi meditationes de prima philosophia, third series of objections, 1642. Elementorum philosophiae sectio tertia de sive, Latin, first limited edition, 1643. De motu, loco et tempore, first edition, 1973, with the title Thomas White's De Mundo Examined, 1644. Part of the prefacio to Merceni Ballistica in F. Marini Merceni Minimi Cogitata Physico Mathematica. In quibus tam natura quam artis effectus admirandi certissimus demonstrationibus explicantor 1644. Optici, Liber Septimus, written in 1640 in Universae Geometriae Mixtique Mathematicae Synopsis, edited by Marin Mersenne reprinted by Molesworth in OLVPP, 215-48 with the title Tractatus Opticus 1646. A minute or first draft of the Optiques Harley MS 3360, Molesworth published only the dedication to Cavendish and the conclusion in EU 7, pp. 467-71 1646. Of Liberty and Necessity published without the permission of Hobbes in 1654 1647. Elementa Philosophica de Sive second expanded edition with a new preface to the reader 1650. Answer to Sir William Davenant's preface before Gondibert 1650. 
Human Nature, or the Fundamental Elements of Policy first 13 chapters of the Elements of Law, Natural and Politic, published without Hobbes's authorization 1650. Pirated edition of the Elements of Law, Natural and Politic, repackaged to include two parts, Human Nature, or the Fundamental Elements of Polici chapters 14-19 of Part 1 of the Elements of 1640 De Corpore Politico Part 2 of the Elements of 1640 1651. Philosophical Rudiments Concerning Government and Society English translation of Decive 1651. Leviathan, or the Matter, Form, and Power of a Commonwealth, Ecclesiastical and Civil 1654. Of Liberty and Necessity, a Treatise 1655. De Corpore Latin 1656. Elements of Philosophy, the First Section, Concerning Body Anonymous English Translation of De Corpore 1656. Six Lessons to the Professor of Mathematics 1656. The Questions Concerning Liberty, Necessity and Chance reprint of Of Liberty and Necessity, a treatise, with the addition of Bramhall's Reply and Hobbes's Reply to Bramahall's Reply 1657. Stigmai, or Marks of the Absurd Geometry, Rural Language, Scottish Church Politics, and Barbarisms of John Wallace 1658. Elementorum Philosophiae Sectio Secunda de Homin 1660. Examinatio et emendatio mathematicae hodierni qualis explicator in Libris Johannes Wallace 1661. Dialogus Physicus, Sieve de Natura Eris 1662. Problematica Physica translated in English in 1682 as Seven Philosophical Problems 1662. Seven Philosophical Problems, and Two Propositions of Geometru published posthumously 1662. Mr. Hobbes considered in his loyalty, religion, reputation, and manners. By way of letter to Dr. Wallace English Autobiography 1666. De Principes and Ratiocination Geometrorum 1666. A dialogue between a philosopher and a student of the common laws of England published in 1681 1668. Leviathan Latin translation 1668. An answer to a book published by Dr. Bramhall published in 1682 1671. Three papers presented to the Royal Society against Dr. Wallace. Together with considerations on Dr. Wallace his answer to them 1671. Rosatum Geometricum, sieve propositions aliquot frustra antihic tentate. Cum censura brevi doctrinae wallisianae de motu 1672. Lux Mathematica. Excusa Collisionibus Johannes Wallace 1673. English translation of Homer's Iliad and Odyssey 1674. Principia et problemata aliquot geometrica anti desperata, nunc brevitor explicata and demonstrata 1678. Decameron Physiologicum, or, Ten Dialogues of Natural Philosophy 1679. Tame Habasi Malmesburiensis Vita. Author Sipso, Latin autobiography, translated into English in 1680, posthumous works 1680, an historical narration concerning heresy and the punishment thereof 1681, Behemoth or the Long Parliament, written in 1668, unpublished at the request of the king, first pirated edition 1679, 1682. Seven Philosophical Problems, English translation of Problematica Physica, 1662, 1682. A Garden of Geometrical Roses, English translation of Rosatum Geometricum, 1671, 1682. Some Principles and Problems in Geometry, English translation of Principia et Problemata, 1674, 1688. Historia Ecclesiastica Carmen Elegiaco Concinita Complete Editions Tame Hobbes Malmesburiensis Opera Philosophica Quae Latina Scripsit, Studio et Labor Giulielmi Molesworth, Londini, 1839-1845, 5 volumes. Reprint, Aylin, 1966 OL, Volume 1 Elementorum Philosophiae I, De Corpore Volume 2, Elementorum Philosophiae 2 and 3, De Homin and De Sive Volume 3. Latin version of Leviathan. Volume 4. Various Concerning Mathematics, Geometry and Physics. Volume 5 Various Short Works, The English Works of Thomas Hobbes of Malmesbury, now first collected and edited by Sir William Molesworth, Bart, London, Bone, 1839-45, 11 volumes. Reprint London, 1939, Reprint, Aylin, 1966, equals EU, Volume 1. De Corpore translated from Latin to English. Volume 2. De Sive. Volume 3. 
The Leviathan Vol. 4, Tripos, in Three Discourses, I. Human Nature, or the Fundamental Elements of Policy 2. De Corpore Politico, or the Elements of Law 3. Of Liberty and Necessity An answer to Bishop Bramhall's book, called The Catching of the Leviathan An Historical Narration Concerning Heresy, and the Punishment Thereof Considerations Upon the Reputation, Loyalty, Manners, and Religion of Thomas Hobbes Answer to Sir William Davenant's Preface Before Gondibert Letter to the Right Honourable Edward Howard Vol. 5. The questions concerning liberty, necessity and chance, clearly stated and debated between Dr. Bramhall Bishop of Derry and Thomas Hobbes of Malmesbury. Volume 6, A Dialogue Between a Philosopher and a Student of the Common Laws of England A Dialogue of the Common Law Behemoth, The History of the Causes of the Civil Wars of England, and of the Councils and Artifices by which they were carried on from the year 1640 to the year 1660 The Whole Art of Rhetoric Hobbes's translation of his own Latin summary of Aristotle's rhetoric published in 1637 with the title A Brief of the Art of Rhetoric The Art of Rhetoric Plainly Set Forth with pertinent examples for the more easy understanding and practice of the same this work is not of Hobbes but by Dudley Fenner, The Arts of Logic and Rhetoric, 1584. The Art of Sophistra Vol. 7, Seven Philosophical Problems de Cameron Physiologicum Proportion of a Straight Line to Half the Arc of a Quadrant Six Lessons to the Civilian Professors of the Mathematics Stigmae, or Marks of the Absurd Geometry etc. of Dr. Wallace Extract of a Letter from Henry Stubbe Three Letters Presented to the Royal Society Against Dr. Wallace Considerations on the Answer of Dr. Wallace Letters and Other Pieces Vol. 8 and 9. The Peloponnesian War by Thucydides, translated into English by Hobbes. Volume 10. The Iliad, and the Odyssey, translated by Hobbes into English Volume 11. Index, posthumous works not included in the Molesworth editions The Elements of Law, Natural and Politic, edited with a preface and critical notes by Ferdinand Tunnies, London, 1889, first complete edition. Short tract on first principles, in the elements of law, natural and politic, Appendix I, pp. 193-210, this work is now attributed to Robert Payne. Tractatus Opticus II, 1639, British Library, Harley MS 6796, ff. 193-266, first partial edition in the Elements of Law, Natural and Politic, Appendix 2, pp. 211-26, first complete edition but omitting the diagrams by Franco Alessio, Revista Critica di Storia della Filosofia, 18, 1963, pp. 147-228. Critique du de, Mundo de Thomas White, edited by Jean Jacquet and Harold Whitmore Jones, Paris, 1973, with three appendixes, De Motibus Solis, Etherus and Tellurus pp. 439-47, a Latin poem on the movement of the earth. Notes in English on an ancient redaction of some chapters of De Corpore July 1643, pp. 448-60, MS 5297, National Library of Wales. Notes for the Logica and Philosophia Prima of the De Corpore pp. 461-513, Chatsworth MSA 10 and the Notes of Charles Cavendish on a Draft of the De Corpore, British Library, Harley MS 6083. Of the Life and History of Thucydides, in Hobbes's Thucydides, edited by Richard Schlatter, New Brunswick, pp. 10-27, 1975. Three Discourses, a critical modern edition of newly identified work of the Young Hobbes TD, edited by Noel B. Reynolds and Arlene Saxonhaus, Chicago, 1975. A Discourse upon the Beginning of Tacitus, in TD, pp. 31-67. A Discourse of Rome, in TD, pp. 71-102. A Discourse of Law, in TD, pp. 105-19. Thomas Hobbes A Minute or First Draft of the Optiques British Library, Harley MS 3360. Critical edition by Elaine C. Stroud, Ph.D. Dissertation, University of Wisconsin-Madison, 1983. Of Passions, edition of the unpublished manuscript Harley 6093 by Anna Minerby Belgrado, in, Revista di Storia della Filosofia, 43, 1988, pp. 729-38. The Correspondence of Thomas Hobbes, edited by Noel Malcolm, Oxford, The Clarendon Edition, Vol. 6-7, 1994 I, 1622-1659, 2, 1660-1679, Translations in Modern English de Corpore, Part 1 Computatio sive Logica. 
Edited with an introductory essay by L. C. Hungerland and G. R. Vick. Translation and commentary by A. Martinich. New York, Abaris Books, 1981. Thomas White's De Mundo Examined, translation by H. W. Jones, Bradford, Bradford University Press, 1976 The appendixes of the Latin edition 1973 are not enclosed, new critical editions of Hobbes' works in progress Clarendon edition of the works of Thomas Hobbes, Oxford, Clarendon Press 10 volumes published of 27 planned. Traduction des Herves Latines de Hobbes, under the direction of Yves Charles Zaka, Paris, VRIN, five volumes published of 17 planned. Topic see also Natural and Legal Rights Section Thomas Hobbes Natural Law Section Hobbes Habesian Trap Conatus Section in Hobbes Joseph Butler Hobbes's Moral and Political Philosophy Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Hobbes, Thomas. Encyclopædia Britannica. 13 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 545-552. Hinduism to Home, Earls of at Project Gutenberg Topic Further reading Topic General resources MacDonald, Hugh and Hargreaves, Mary. Thomas Hobbes, A Bibliography, London, The Bibliographical Society, 1952. Hinnant, Charles H. 1980. Thomas Hobbes, A Reference Guide, Boston, G. K. Hall & Co. Garcia, Alfred 1986. Thomas Hobbes, Bibliographie internationale de 1620 à 1986, Caen, Centre de philosophie politique et juridique Université de Caen. Topic critical studies Brandt, Frithiev 1928. Thomas Hobbes' Mechanical Conception of Nature, Copenhagen, Levin and Monksgaard. Jessup, Douglas M. 1999. Squaring the Circle. The War Between Hobbes and Wallace, Chicago, University of Chicago Press. Lagenhorst, Seas. The Mechanization of Aristotelianism. The Late Aristotelian Setting of Thomas Hobbes' Natural Philosophy, Leiden, Brill. Lametti, Juhana. Historical Dictionary of Hobbes's Philosophy, Lanham, Scarecrow Press. McPherson, C. B. The Political Theory of Possessive Individualism, Hobbes to Locke, Oxford, Oxford University Press. Malcolm, Noel 2002. Aspects of Hobbes, New York, Oxford University Press. Malcolm, Noel 2007. Reason of State, Propaganda, and the Thirty Years' War, an unknown translation by Thomas Hobbes, New York, Oxford University Press. Manant, Pierre 1996. An Intellectual History of Liberalism, Princeton, Princeton University Press. Martinich, A.P. 2003. Thomas Hobbes in the Dictionary of Literary Biography, Vol. 281, British Rhetoricians and Logicians, 1500-1660, Second Series, Detroit, Gale, pp. 130-44. Martinich, A.P. 1995. A Hobbes Dictionary, Cambridge, Blackwell. Martinich, A.P. Thomas Hobbes, New York, St. Martin's Press. Martinich, A.P. The Two Gods of Leviathan, Thomas Hobbes on Religion and Politics, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Martinich, A.P. Hobbes, A Biography, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Narvison, Jan, Trenkard, David Hobbes, Thomas In Hamowy, Ronald. Hobbes, Thomas 1588 The Encyclopedia of Libertarianism. Thousand Oaks, C.A., Sage, Cato Institute. pp. 226–27. doi.10.4135.9781400.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0001.0
Ross, George MacDonald 2009. Starting with Hobbes, London, Continuum. Schappen, Stephen and Schaefer, Simon 1995. Leviathan and the Air Pump. Princeton, Princeton University Press. Skinner, Quentin 1996. Reason and Rhetoric in the Philosophy of Hobbes, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Skinner, Quentin 2002. Visions of Politics. Volume. 3, Hobbes and Civil Science, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Stomp, Gabriella, ed. 2008. Thomas Hobbes, Aldershot, Ashgate. Strauss, Leo 1936. The Political Philosophy of Hobbes, Its Basis and Its Genesis, Oxford, Clarendon Press. Strauss, Leo 1959. On the Basis of Hobbes's Political Philosophy. In What is Political Philosophy? Glencoe, Ill, Free Press, Chap. 7. Tunnies, Ferdinand 1925. Hobbes. Leben und Lehr, Stuttgart, Frohmann, 3rd ed. Tuck, Richard 1993. Philosophy and Government, 1572-1651, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Vélez, Fabio 2014. La palabra y la espada, of Vueltas con Hobbes, Madrid, Maya. Vieira, Monica Brito 2009. The Elements of Representation in Hobbes, Leiden, Brill Publishers. Zagorin, Perez 2009. Hobbes and the Law of Nature, Princeton NJ, Princeton University Press. Topic. External links Works by Thomas Hobbes at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Thomas Hobbes at Internet Archive Works by Thomas Hobbes at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Hobbes Texts English Translations by George MacDonald Ross Contains Leviathan, lightly edited for easier reading Thomas Hobbes, A Minute or First Draft of the Optiques at Digitized Manuscripts Clarendon Edition of the Works of Thomas Hobbes Richard A. Talaska, ed., The Hardwick Library and Hobbes's Early Intellectual Development Hobbes Studies Online Edition Bulletin Hobbes in the Journal Archives de Philosophie Thomas Hobbes at the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Hobbes's Moral and Political Philosophy at the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Hobbes, Methodology at the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy Hobbes, Moral and Political Philosophy at the Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy A Brief Life of Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679 by John Aubrey A Short Biography of Thomas Hobbes Hobbes at the Philosophy Pages Thomas Hobbes on In Our Time at the BBC Thomas Hobbes nominated by Steven Pinker for the BBC Radio 4 programme Great Lives